Hello everyone, my name is Nana and welcome back to Ejima. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the current cost of living, living in Charlotte, North Carolina, and the prices of apartments, okay? Also, we're gonna go into housing in general. So if you're someone that's thinking about moving to Charlotte, North Carolina in 2022, you definitely don't want to miss this video. Before I go into it, don't forget to like, share, and if you are feeling this content, please do subscribe, okay? So let's get into it. I've been living in Charlotte for about a year and a half and I've noticed a, quite a few trends. And as someone who actually has, um, you know, lived here for some time, I have quite a few bills, I have a reasonable job. I feel like I have a lot to say about Charlotte's cost of living. A lot of times when we talk about cost of living, people are just so focused on how much does rent cost? But you also need to think about how much do people make, right? Because let's say you're living in a place where rent is high, right? And let's say like California, right? We were doing some research, me and my family. And the average um, one room apartment in LA is $2,500. Some people may hear that and pass out. Oh my God, that's so expensive. But you also need to look into how much does the average person earn in LA? Like people living in these places can't be that crazy. Right, yes, there's a lot of homelessness, a lot of people are living in poverty, but it usually tends to be that where things cost more, people are making more. However, there are a few instances where people can leave a more expensive place and relocate to somewhere like Charlotte, especially if you're in finance. I've seen it firsthand. Someone can leave somewhere that has a higher cost of living, get a job in finance in somewhere like Charlotte and even make more. That's when you really have scored a goal, right? Because you're leaving somewhere that costs more to somewhere that costs less, but your salary is increasing. It's like an opposite. So sometimes we kids can't get caught in how much is your rent or how much do you make? We have to look at both of them, right? And I'm not gonna lie, Sean is getting really expensive. I have stats, I'm gonna put in the link where I got these statistics from. I was reading a lot of information. You know, all websites will have like some averages that might be slightly off, but I can attest to a lot of these things because I live here. I've looked at apartments recently. I know like what's going on and like even some of the sh stats shocked me because you know because I moved here during the pandemic and I got such a low rent rate it kind of can make me delusional right because I'm going around thinking that like that's what's like the norm and like my rent is so cheap for my neighborhood honestly like it's really affordable so that's another reason why I had to renew my lease because it just didn't make sense like I'm about to leave this place because they charged me 180 more a month on rent but the next place I'm going to move to, the neighborhood is not as good and it's going to cause me, cost me even more. I have to pay movers. I have to go through that stress. None of that doesn't make sense. Like I definitely, this September would move period, whether, I don't know if which, that video has gone up yet, so I don't want to spill any tea, but like, I just need more in an apartment. Three main things I don't like about it. I love the location, but I don't like the fact that the windows I have don't have screens. So it makes me hesitant about opening the windows and I cook a lot, get stuffy. Like I need windows with screens. Um, I don't like the electric heating is right now I'm feeling cold air blowing on me. I don't think it gets hot enough. I won't want gas. I don't know if that's really common down here, but it might be because it does actually get cold down here. And I want a front loading washing machine. I don't like the top loading. So those are three things that like in my next apartment, I can't compromise. I can't like manage that. Like, you know, I have to get that. So I would, I, oh, maybe top one. Also, I want a bigger closet. My closet is too small and I don't really have another closet besides the closet in my room. So those four things. But anyway, I digress. Let me get to the point. So let me hit y'all with some facts real quick. You know, I like to come with my stats. The average price of a one bedroom apartment in Charlotte, North Carolina is currently $1,522. This is according to Rent Cafe, which is pretty reliable. And this has been an upward trend in the past five years. It used to be about $1,200, okay? For $1,522, you'll be getting about 942 square feet. Remember, these are all averages, so some are gonna be lower. My apartment is less than 1,522, and my square footage is also less. But I'm also in a more expensive area, so that's why I'm not gonna get as much as some other people that probably could easily get a one bedroom for 1,000 square feet. I would love that. Um, most people, however, despite the average being 1,522, most people are paying one, from 1,000 to 1,500, 45% of people. Okay, are paying within that range. So the most people are paying about that. The three most expensive neighborhoods in Charlotte are Eastover, Uptown, and South End. 
okay? In Eastover, the average one-bedroom apartment is $2,352. In Uptown, the average one-bedroom apartment is $2,203. In South End, the average apartment is $2,006. I live in South End. So if I'm telling you my rent is cheaper than the price of an average one-bedroom, $1,522, and the average is $2,000, then I really got a steal. Like, I can't even lie. Like, I really, and mind you, with the steal, I still feel like my rent costs too much compared to what I make. I still feel like my rent is too expensive. So I just can't imagine people who make less than me trying to move to Charlotte now. Like, where y'all about to, like, where y'all trying to live? Like, for real, like, I'm so honest. Like, can you guys give me suggestions? Leave in the comment sections of areas that you're looking into because, you know, I really want to be like in a vibrant, bubbling location. So that's why I chose here. But there's no way I could afford South End if I didn't move during the pandemic. I'm just being real. I'm being transparent. There's no way the apartments here, the prices are crazy. I will be spending probably one full paycheck just on rent. Probably even more than that. How is someone going to save paying these rent prices? You know, and like people look at me and they're like, oh, you have a good job. So I just, you know, my salary, like I said, I don't make six figures, but my salary really isn't that crazy either. So I'm just wondering, like, how are people that don't make what I make? Because everyone, let's be real, everyone doesn't work for Duke Energy, Okay. Everyone is not in finance. Like there's people making 50,000, 45,000, 55,000, 40,000. You know, like how are those people surviving in a, such an expensive market? You know, I think the best thing is if you can get a roommate. If you know someone you can move with, I think that's the way you really save a lot of money because this one bedroom life is not for the week. These one bedroom prices are wild. So let's give some other places to compare this to. The average one bedroom in Raleigh, 1,510. Durham, 1,432. Concord, this shocked me, 1,426. Huntersville, 1,577. So Huntersville average apartment is even higher than Charlotte. So th that's the thing. A lot of people look into the Concord, Huntersville area. I think that's more popular when looking into housing, right? Because the school systems, well, I know about Concord school systems, you get more for your money. But when it comes to rent, I was shocked that their, the Huntersville average rent price was more than Charlotte. So I don't know much about Huntersville. I hear it's a very nice area. So maybe that's why maybe it's more suburban, you know, so like, and it's smaller, you know, I'm pretty sure. So I don't know if that's part of it because Charlotte still has expensive areas and they still have hoods, you know, they still have places that are not expensive. So everyone thinks of Charlotte, just think of Uptown. No, <coughs> like I listed Uptown is the second most expensive neighborhood in Charlotte. That's one part of Charlotte. Charlotte has 160, I'll correct it from, I believe in the article, I read 164 neighborhoods. So I'm just listing three. That's nothing. Charlotte has a lot. Like, you can't compare Charlotte to really Huntersville because Huntersville is small. So I digress. I got two different average salaries for people living in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they're kind of a big difference. So let me know what y'all think. According to PayScale, the average person makes seventy thousand dollars, and according to ZipRecruiter, they make fifty-eight thousand four hundred forty-eight. I think PayScale. I don't believe the average person makes seventy thousand. I feel like that's too high. My personal opinion. I'm more leaning towards ZipRecruiter stats. And I think I saw another stat with around 60,000. So I don't know where pay skills get their 70,000 from. Um, average salary nationwide is $66,665. So let's assume that the average salary is about 60,000. It's still lower than the average salary for the nation. Cost of living has increased by 5% as of the ending of last year. The cost average home price in Charlotte, North Carolina is $343,760. That was as of November 30th, according to this one statistic, okay? As of December 2021, the median listing price of a house in Charlotte, North, Charlotte, North Carolina was $369,900. The median home sold price was $362,000. So that's like amazing. Basically, any house sold for what they wanted this was a 5.7 percent increase over a year basically like i've mentioned before right now charlotte kind of carolina is a seller's market people are looking to buy more than there's homes available so now is a good time and it's predicted that a lot more a lot of people who held on to their property in 2020 and 2021 are going to sell this year and hopefully that is going to help the market because there'll be more houses on the market for people to buy but that said let's put it into perspective i said the median house i have two figures one was as of november that was a 343,760. then as of december 369.9 thousand okay the average home in the state of north carolina goes for about two hundred and seventy three thousand dollars so put that into perspective that means a house in charlotte is about a hundred thousand dollars more 
than other places in North Carolina. It's just one place in North Carolina. Like there's so many more affordable places, but it's like, do they have what Charlotte has to offer? I think that's why it's so popular because like people like me, I know what really informed my decision when I was moving is I didn't want to go to a really rural area. You know, I just didn't really want to go to the middle of nowhere. Like I'm a Northern girl, you know, like I, if I was going to eventually go there, I wanted the transition to be slowly, slowly, slowly. You know, I'm not saying I would never move out to somewhere more rural. Probably if I had kids and stuff. Yeah, it might be what I actually like. like I actually like a quiet, calm, slow pace. I really don't mind it, you know. But I think that's what attracts a lot of people to Charlotte. Because it's like, if you're going to move here, it's like, where else are you trying to go? You know, it's like Charlotte or Raleigh. You know, like those are like the top two. Like anywhere else is like... I'm sure people move there, but it's like, who's really saying, I'm moving from Cali to go to Winston-Salem. You know, I'm moving from New York to go to Greensboro. Like, you know, I'm sure it happens, but I feel like it is not as common. And the one thing you'll notice living in Charlotte, like even, you know, I was just at an appointment on Friday. And like, even people you meet, they're moving from just South Carolina. The girl lady was like, yeah, I'm a country girl. I'm from something, something South Carolina. She had like a really strong accent. Like you could just tell, like, it's not only us, quote unquote, like people like to come for us transplants that are coming from the north, from the west coast, you know, from expensive cities. But people don't realize how many people are just even moving from Greensboro to Charlotte, Winston-Salem to Charlotte, Raleigh to Charlotte, Columbia to Charlotte. You know what I mean? Like other parts of South Carolina to Charlotte, you know? So that's another factor. Like everyone is moving here. So it just makes sense that prices, the rent prices and um, home prices are going up. And like, Ultimately, what I say, it balances out. I don't think so. I think that Charlotte, I think there's a lot of underemployment in Charlotte. Like, I don't think they're paying people enough to match the housing and their, and their rental prop prices. I really don't think so because everyone's not in finance. Annoying thing that I would say now is that everything has to be luxury. I'm all about the luxury lifestyle. I live in a luxury apartment, but not everyone necessarily cares for that. Like, for me, I just want it to be new and, like, I just want it to be nice. It doesn't have to have a gym, to be honest. I could use an NTC Nike training workout and work out by myself in my apartment. You know, I don't need all this fanciness. I don't need all this to, for you to charge me exorbitant prices. You know, like, but the issue is that now whenever they make an apartment, it is mandatory for it to be luxury. You know, so that's what's driving up these costs because they know that people, like, they could put it at a certain price point that they would not be able to just put up a regular apartment for. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's kind of, I think, with the rental market, what's making it, Annoying that everything is new. Everything they build is new. Everything is new. They keep building. They keep building. If I look out my window now, they're building. If I look here, they're building. So you're building all these fancy places. They're not about to build a fancy 20-story building and charge you $1,200. You know what I mean? Like, I've showed y'all, like, it have showed y'all the Hawk that's in South End. You know, I've showed you, like, it's like these prices out here. Just like, I want to go up to these people's apartments and be like, what do you do? What do you do? Like, one day, <laughs> like, I wish I could just be in my apartment and like, excuse me, what do you do? Excuse me, what do you do? Excuse me, what do you do for work? You know, I'm just curious because it's like, it's not a joke to live somewhere where your rent is 2000 and you're single, you're by yourself. You're not splitting that. You don't have no one to go 50-50 with. You're single, you're paying rent for 2000 Like, you got to be doing something. Like, let put me on. I'm willing to, I could learn to train. I'm a fast learner, you know. Can you train me? Because it's, 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 it's getting real. So, of course, if you compare it to like, living in LA where the average is 2,500 and the average for us is 1,500. It's much cheaper, but then like, what is your earning potential? So I think that's what it really comes down to based on your sector, based on where, what type of field you're in, whether the move really makes sense. So you have to do that research. You have to figure that out. You know, like you have to figure it out for yourself. Just don't go based on, oh, the rent is much cheaper from where I live, but how much are you going to make? You get what I'm saying? Because if the rent is cheaper, but you make one much less, then what's really the point? Unless you're doing it physically because you just want like other things. You're not thinking about cost of living. A lot of people, what drives their, what drives them to move is cost of living. For me, it wasn't, cost of living was part of it, but it was really warmer weather in different environment. Because if it was, I tell y'all, I told you I'd be getting a video. If I was thinking about money, I would move to Cali. Before I moved, I did it. Google, how much do nurses make? What is the, t I knew what I was walking into. Like I wasn't blind, but I wasn't paying the bills either. You get me when you start paying the bills and making that money, you're like, yeah, I could use more money. Like that would, you know, that wouldn't hurt. You know, and I, I wouldn't, I'm not struggling, but I want more spending money. You get what I'm saying? I haven't even, I paid off my private loan last year, thank goodness. So my federal loan, I haven't touched since March of 2020 when they paused it. So especially if I have to start paying back my federal loan, whenever that pause ends, oh no, the salary not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. So I think that's very important. Like I said, if I was really thinking about just my, I would Google Top 
states where nurses make the most money. Everyone knows it's California. I would have been on the first plane to California, but like, I don't want to be that far. And I'm, I'm not really into the West Coast, you know. I just don't see myself moving somewhere so far. You know, the time, I feel like it's like being in another country. Like, if I'm going to move to Cali, like, let me just move to, like, Europe or something. I know that sounds ignorant, but I'm serious. I just feel like it's too far. I never really care for West Coast life. Like, I actually like Southern life. Like, I, I, I wouldn't mind going more, going further south. And like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I would like to be somewhere warmer. You know, so, you know, just putting a lot of things into perspective. And um, that's basically what I have. I have some other stats about, like, you know... Um, Rock Hill is rapidly growing. So Rock Hill is like on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, and then according to this site I talked about, um, NoradRealEstate.com, a one-bedroom average in Charlotte is 1433 So one stat said 1433 one said 1522 So it's like a $90 difference. So somewhere around there, you know, every site is going to give you something different. But I believe it's pretty accurate because there's a lot of expensive apartments and then the cheaper ones, you know, it seems like everything would average out. Most people are not paying 2000 you know, like I mentioned, that's the most expensive neighborhood, but most people are paying from 1000 to 1500 for a one bedroom. So with all of this, knowing all of this, are you still thinking about moving to Charlotte in 2022? Let me know in the comment section. I'm really, really interested to know where you're coming from. Why do you want to move? Why did you leave? Um, just let me know what you think. Like, I really, really want to know. I love talking to people that are thinking about moving to Charlotte just because, you know, I've been there and I wish I would have had more people to talk to, you know, and ask some personal questions. So I do reply comments. Um, let me know, like, what... What do you think? Like, do you think this is the year that you really want to make that move? Are you between Charlotte and somewhere else? You know, we've done like Charlotte and Raleigh videos, Charlotte and Houston videos. Like, those are big places. <clears throat> I'm surprised we never did Charlotte and Dallas. Because Dallas, I'm hearing, is like going to come up too. Like, a lot of people moving to Dallas. So, let me know in the comment section what you think about this video about Charlotte's cost of living versus how much they pay. And if it measures up. Let me know. Do you think it measures up? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye.